You are now chopping it up with the Nerd Barbershop Podcast. Thank you. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Nerd Barbershop Podcast. I'm Taryn Williams. Thank you so much for clicking on this episode and hanging out with me for a little bit. In this episode, we're going to be talking about Ms. Marvel on Disney+. Plus. So before I begin, spoiler warning for the entire series, I'll be touching on some stuff that they talked about, um, key moments of the, the whole series, key stories and um, all the episodes and things like that. And also talking about maybe the future of what Ms. Marvel has done for the MCU going forward. Uh, at the time we record this episode, San Diego, San Diego Comic-Con is happening. So we're expecting some trailers and news and updates for all the new MCU properties and things like that. Um, what's going to be happening with the Marvel's movie, which is going to be the next time we see Kamala Khan as Marvel. Um, X-Men 97 next year. Black Panther Wakanda Forever we're expecting to see some stuff for. And maybe some other surprises and things like that. So, um, before I get into a lot of the Disney Plus series, let's talk about Kamala Khan. So Kamala Khan is the first Muslim hero in Marvel Comics. She was during the time where Marvel was doing their... I forget what it was called. It was like Marvel's Initiative or something like that. But they were trying to bring in more diverse characters where Kamala Khan came in, Miles Morales came in, Riri, uh, Riri Williams came in, I think America Chavez might have been part of that. And so they were just trying to bring in kind of a wider spectrum of characters for more people, in, you know, people uh, characters of colors and races and creeds and gender and things like that. So she kind of came in during that time. And so she is the first Muslim, uh, she is the first Muslim hero in, uh, in Marvel history. And then also she is an inhuman in the comics. Now, one of the biggest things that they did change in Disney's uh, Disney Plus show is that she is no longer an inhuman. Um, by the end of the show, Bruno, Kamala's friend, who's actually like the science guy. I was talking about Bruno a little bit, but he actually was doing like experiments on Kamala, seeing like how her powers work and things like that in the beginning of the episode. We're in some tests. By the end of the episode, he said he had some more. He did some more research. He looked more into it. And Kamala had a mutation in her genes. If you watch the show, they do the little sting from the uh, X Men animated cartoon. They did a da na 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 na, and so it was really really cool that they actually kind of confirmed she is going to be a mutant. So not only is she a mutant, she is the first confirmed mutant in the MCU, which is a pretty big thing going forward. Now let's go into the show. The show is a coming of age story of Kamala. She's a junior in high school, so she's about seventeen years old, going through like you know, all the high school stuff and things like that. You know, trying to, I mean, she's kind of awkward, kind of nerdy. You know, she has her friends she's close to and things like that. She has her parents and she has to grow up being, you know, a Muslim American. You know, her family's from Pakistan. She lives in Jersey City, you know, just trying to put it all together. And she's a huge Captain Marvel fan. It's like in the comics. Uh, Kamala gets this bangle from her. She gets this box from her, her nanny, which is her grandmother. Has all these trinkets and things like that. And she finds this bangle. And she asked her mom about it. Her mom's like, no, don't worry about that. Hide in the attic. Kamala like, no, I want this bangle. She's actually going out to Avengers Con, which is like uh, New Jersey's uh, version of Comic-Con. Fitting, I'm actually recording this during San Diego Comic-Con weekend. And she puts, she grabs the bangle. She's going to use it as a part of her Captain Marvel costume that she cosplays as. Or for this uh, Captain Marvel competition. She gets the bangle. She ends up putting it on. And she's transformed to this, like, she goes to this other realm, and it's purple and stuff. And then she comes back out of it. She's trying to figure out, like, what's happening? Um, another person at the convention, who was actually Zoe, her classmate, ends up, uh, I forget, like, some stuff happens. And she ends up catching Zoe using these powers. Now, in the comics, Kamala, she does what's called embiggen, where she, you know, makes her, she just gets taller. She makes her arms kind of stretchy, her legs she gets kind of bigger. Her legs get bigger, her arms get bigger, and she can kind of... Very similar to Mr. Fantastic. Just so you have a point of reference. But in the show, she has this light power. Where it's very similar to Green Lantern. Where instead of her really getting bigger, she creates these light constructs. And her arm kind of could stretch out and caught Zoe. It wasn't really her actual arm. It was kind of her arm infused with this light. You know, with kind of this light glow, this light power around it. And yeah, so that's how she kisses Zoe. So the mo- so the purpose of the show is kind of her learning about her powers, learning how to use them, getting better at them, and things like that. Because in the comics, she just hasn't big in. That's all she does. And in the MCU, they gave her this kind of power upgrade. And some people were complaining about it. 
To be completely honest, I was too because I was like, I was like, oh, I wasn't sure how I was feeling about uh, the powers. You know, I wasn't sure how I felt about her having these, these kind of these light powers where she does these light constructs and things like that. I forget what uh, Bruno calls it. He calls it something, hard light. That's what he calls it. So like these hard light abilities. But I, but also, but at the end of the series, I realized what this is gonna do now is one, it makes her like it gives her a visual presence on screen. Two, it gives her a really massive power upgrade because I'm pretty sure in the Marvels, her, uh, Carol Danvers, and Monica Rambeau, they're gonna get there, there's gonna be some shit happening, <laughs> and she's gonna need to kind of have more abilities than what she normally equipped with. Also, it gives her way more flexibility because one of the things she learns, one of the first things she learns is she creates these lily pads for traversal. So she throws down like platforms and she runs and jumps on them like a classic platform game, like a Mario game or a Mega Man game. And so she does that, which I think is actually really good because that gives her a way of moving around the screen. So she doesn't have to depend on someone carrying her. She can just kind of create, you know, she can create platforms and stuff like that to move around. Also, I was thinking that would be really cool when she gets in, like, when she gets to meet other characters, like, let's say, with Kate Bishop. You know, maybe she'll throw platforms so Kate can get up higher to higher positions and things like that. There's going to be some really unique things they can do with the with the powers, especially on the big screen. I'm pretty sure the Disney Plus show didn't have a really big um, special effects budget. You can kind of tell it. But you really learn about Kamala's past, and they really connected her powers to kind of the past, to her family, to her origins. You find out that... She's actually a she's actually um a celestial a celestial or not a celestial a clandestine not celestial clandestine clandestines were like these really big super deep undercut uh beings from the X Men comics which was really cool a nice little X Men parallel to what we get later on in the series but also they called them um, gins and gins are in like uh, Indian and kind of like Pakistani in that uh, Middle Eastern mythology they're kind of like spirit they could be demons they could be good they can be bad. So they call them, you know, they're called jinns, and they're from the Nord dimension. And Nord means light in Hindu or Urdu, I believe. And so it was really cool. So you find out, so Kamala's like, oh, she's part clandestine, part jinn. It's kind of weird, but whatever. And you find out, then you have a story about her grandmother and during the partition, which is this really horrific like moment in kind of Middle Eastern history where families were like where they were creating like Pakistan and India and just families were separated and you know just it was really it was really it was really crazy and they actually do a version of that on the shows you get to see like just what was handling thousands and thousands of people just trying to get on trains and pack up what they can and go and you know just try and figure it out so it was really really interesting also there's um connections to shang chi and the ten rings because you do a flashback um kamala's great-grandmother aisha and the clandestines that she were with they actually find the bangle that Kamala has in a temple that, that looks like it, ha- it has a Ten Rings logo, which is really, really cool. So the Ten Rings like organization was active during this time. And it was on some type of blue arm. So everybody was assuming. We're assuming that it's a Kree. So you have like Kree. You have the Ten Rings. You have clandestine. You have like the Nord Dimension. Like, it's a lot of stuff. And I feel like... And one thing I said about... Miss Marvel, I feel like at first you'd be like, okay, it'll be just kind of her coming of age story, but it has more connections than I think anyone has than like anyone thought about. And I really enjoyed the show as a whole because again, I thought because we we haven't really got like a young hero's coming of age story. We haven't really had that yet, you know. So it was nice to see kind of see seventeen dealing with this, trying to figure it out. And yeah, they feel kind of rushed. You only get six episodes. I really wish Disney Plus shows had eight episodes at least. I think that would help so much of the pacing and the story and we really get kind of ideas a little bit more flushed out because sometimes you feel like we get to a to b to, to c and all of a sudden we're in g really really quickly it'd be nice if there were eight episodes i don't know if that's the budgeting i don't know if kevin feige and everybody they can like budget for two more episodes because six episodes feels really really short and feels really really tight well, i think eight episodes would be perfect for disney plus shows but Kamala also she ends up getting her comic book outfit because by right before the season finale, you know, her mom and her grandma actually sees Kamala using her powers. Kamala kind of explains it the best she can. And Kamala has all of these pieces that she's gotten throughout the show where Bruno gave uh, gave her a mask. Um, one of the Red Daggers, or actually the Red red Dagger, I forget his name. Uh, Kam, not Kamran. Kamal? I forget his name. 
but one of the red dagger. He gives her he gives her his red scarf. Waleed, who was kind of leading the red daggers organization as a whole, gave her this gave her this blue fabric, which is really really nice. And then um, Kamala's necklace breaks and it creates kind of like a thunderbolt. And so her mom used that as inspiration for the piece down the middle. Yeah, it gets kind of pl- it gets kind of put together, kind of you know kind of like okay, we need to like wrap this up, put it together. Oh hey, it looks really nice. But I really liked how the costume turned out. I also love what they do for her name, where they say like her dad's talking to her. They said that they were gonna like Kamal means like wonder in Urdu, but it really translates to more like Marvel. And so so Kamala being the female version of Kamal would make her Miss Marvel. Really cool, really sweet moment. I really liked it. So really kind of cool to connect all these things to Kamala, to family, to tradition, to her like to her heritage, and just making her really feel like you know her character is grounding some stuff. Now to like the biggest like the biggest point of the show was of course was the end credits was towards the end of the show where Bruno was saying that Kamala had a mutation, and also the post credit scene where the Bengal lights up and Kamala just kind of transports somewhere, and then her. And Carol Danvers, Miss uh, Miss Marvel, Carol Danvers, uh, Captain Marvel, switch faces. Carol kind of looks around, like, "Oh shit!" And she just runs off the screen. So, hopefully, when the Miss Marvel, when the when the Marvels movie comes out, maybe we start the movie with where Kamala ends up, and then we kind of backtrack a little bit because I think that's a really that'd be a really fun point. Because I know a lot of people weren't gonna watch uh, Miss Marvel. Like, oh, I don't want to see this. It's not interesting. Blah blah blah. And I think Miss Marvel really just tied so much stuff together, and that's like a bigger piece of the MCU. Whereas I think now it's probably one of the bigger movies, like the bigger pieces of Phase Four. So I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed Miss Marvel. I want to see more of her. Uh, Iman Vellani, who plays Kamala Khan, is amazing in that role. She just fits it, just like how Robert Downey Jr. is Tony Stark Iron Man. Iman Vellani is. Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel, like she is, she nails it. You like just watching her do interviews and talk about it. She's just a big fan, and I love, I appreciate that. I think getting fans to play these characters is like the best way to do it because you get all the love, the passion. They'll, they'll put all like it's not even about the money. It's about portraying the character to the best way possible to kind of honor all the materials and stuff that came before it. It's really really dope. So now for the MCU going forward. Now we're starting to get like uh, a lot of people say, well, what is phase four setting up? Well, phase four is really setting up, of course, Kane the Conqueror, which we've seen, who made his official appearance in uh, Ant Man and Wasp Quantumanium. But uh, Kane the Conqueror or Kane variant was, of course, he who remains at the end of Loki. So we get that. The Young Avengers, because now we have Kate Bishop, you have uh, Kamala Khan, <clears throat> uh, Cassie Lang is going to be in. Casting is going to be in um, Ant Man and Wasp Quantum Man. So that's three younger heroes. I'm pretty sure Spider Man is going to lead that group because he'll probably be, you know, he's older, but he's still relatively young. So he'll probably lead the Young Avengers group and they're kind of building towards that. So yeah, I, I really enjoyed Ms. Marvel. All six episodes are up on Disney Plus. Go check it out. And I think if you can watch all six episodes in a row, I think it's a really good story. It's really fun. Like, yeah, there's moments you can tell they cut stuff here and there. And some things feel rushed. And some things, you know, don't necessarily line up completely. But I also feel like it's a really good heartfelt story about family. And it's one of the reasons, like, we read a lot of comics. was just that connection to, you know, the family and being different and powers. And just seeing this person gets powers and how the world completely changes. It was really fun. I definitely enjoyed it. Um, I know a lot of people were complaining, like I talked about earlier, about uh, Kamala not, no, no longer being inhuman. But the Inhumans were really designed to kind of be uh, a slight replacement for the X-Men because Marvel sold the rights to the X-Men to Fox. Anything Marvel did with X-Men and Fox would get a cut. So they needed something to kind of replace X-Men in a way. They were trying to push Inhumans and whoever was running Marvel at the time like the creators of Cat of Miss Marvel wanted her wanted Kong to be a an X Men. They wanted they wanted her not to be an X Men. They wanted her to be a um, mutant. They wanted that. They absolutely wanted that. But Marvel told them to make her an inhuman so they could push her so Sony wouldn't get a cut of it. Or so uh Fox wouldn't get a cut of it. Yeah, not Sony, Fox. Sony has Spider Man. Fox has X Men. 
So yeah, so Fox didn't get a cut of anything X Men related or Fantastic Four related. So they told her, they told him, hey, make her an Inhuman so we can like pocket all the money. So now her being a mutant and having the mutant gene, uh, in the MCU can do whatever what they truly want to do with Kamala Khan going forward. This is really cool. I'm very curious to see what else they do with it, do with the character. I want to see some of the other characters as well. Can't wait to see what else they do with Phase Four because a lot of people are saying, oh, Phase Four is not making sense. It's only not making sense because we don't have because hindsight is twenty twenty. The reasons why the first three phases made sense was now we can look back and say, oh, they were setting up this here, this here, this here. Because when the MCU first started, we had no idea they had like a plan and stuff was going to connect. And now that we have that that history and then we have these expectations, people are looking for connections everywhere. It's like, no, just watch the shows when you, you know, watch the ones you want to watch, let it breathe, let it cook, and then. In a couple of years, we'll see how it all ties together, where all the connections are, and seeing all the characters interact with each other, which I think is going to be really fun. So yeah, so this is kind of my brief, I guess it's kind of say, it's not really a review, a little bit of a review of Cap, of Miss, I keep saying Captain Marvel, a little bit of a review of Miss Marvel and Disney+, Plus, a little bit of what Phase 4 is going to be, and just kind of my excitement going forward for Phase 4, because I think it's been interesting. It's, it's different, because again, since we have no idea what Kevin Feige's plans are, so when we get to like, Phase like five, I think is where we might start seeing stuff make more sense. But right now, I'm here for the ride. But thanks so much for clicking on this episode of the Nerd Barbershop Podcast. Greatly appreciate it. Like I said, I'm trying to get uh two episodes every month, so this will actually be my second episode in July. Uh, I'm going to come back to my next episode. I'm going to be talking about the Bear on FX. Really love that show. We really want to talk about it. Love it. Uh, it got renewed for season two, so I'm going to talk about that. What I want to see for season two of The Bear. So I'll get on that to the next episode of the Nerd Barbershop Podcast. But till then, thank you so much for listening. Always remember, slicing, dicing, gaming, not just the motto. Lifestyle. I'll see you next podcast. Later. <laughs>